Welcome back to the Behind Their Business podcast. If you are a listener of the show, or if this is your first time listening, then welcome. Today, our guest is going to be sharing about being the breadwinner in her family with three kids under five. I don't know how she's doing it, but she's going to share her secrets with us. She's also going to be sharing about what it was like to run a business with a newborn. So a newborn plus two others. So she'll have a lot of insights to share with us. But in her business, our guest is a coach for freelancing moms who are looking to create a sustainable business and avoid burnout, which who doesn't want that? So please welcome Elise Colson. Elise, I'm so glad you're here. I am so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome. So let's just dive in. Let, let's talk about all of the things having to do with business and kids. So let's start though with what you were doing before you started your business because you were in a nine to five, right? I was. So I actually was in education. I was a teacher for six years and then I um, stepped into school admin roles. Once my, once my son was, my first child was born, um, it was actually right around the same time that that's when I made the shift in the transition because it's hard to be a teacher and also like supporting and being home with your kids. And so as a school administrator, my day-to-day stuff was really busy while I was at work, but I wasn't really taking a whole lot of work home with me. And so like, that was a really great compromise. Um, and I loved education. Like education is, is absolutely the very first love quite honestly, that I ever had. I'd wanted to, be, I'd wanted to be a teacher since I was seven. And so like I went and I did the thing and I was a teacher and then I like shifted into school admin stuff and being an instructional coach. And while I loved all of those things a lot, once I started having kids, I realized how much more I loved my kids than the job I was doing. And so like, I mean, my principal tried so hard to keep me as long as she possibly could. Um, but it was a lot of just like, I can't keep driving back and forth from my nine to five. I worked an hour and a half away from where we live, um, because the school that I worked at was just so great and so wonderful, but I couldn't keep commuting three plus hours a day. And, and especially if there were any sort of like after school meetings or anything, I mean, I didn't get to see my kids and that just like, was not okay with me. Um, and so I actually started a virtual assistant business in May of 2018, right as I was on maternity leave with my second child, with my daughter. Um, and it actually, it took me a good two years to build up the income that I needed to be able to make in order to quit my nine to five job because my husband is also a teacher. And so I was not given the ability to just quit. Once I made a couple thousand dollars, I needed to be making consistent $5,000 months every single month at a minimum. Um, and so once I was able to do that, then I could step out and, and do my business full time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm just like, I'm thinking about this because our story has so many parallels because I too had a crazy commute to work. Like at one time, when we were building our house, long story, I was driving six hours a day for my commute because I, we were living with my mom. My job was in another state. Like it was crazy. <laughs> and prior to that, it was about the same though. Cause we lived in the city and traffic, you know, crazy, crazy, crazy. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I can totally understand why you wouldn't want to be in a vehicle when you could be with your children. Like who doesn't want that? Right. Oh, man. Well, and the thing was, it wasn't even like driving constantly for an hour and a half. Like if it was a distance thing and I had to drive an hour and a half away and my car was constantly moving, that doesn't bother me as much as like sitting and stop and go traffic for an hour and a half. And you get home and you're just like completely exhausted. And my kids and my husband were getting like the least best energy that I had because I had spent it all either in the car or at work. And then I was coming home and I was like, the least fun version of myself. Mm-hmm. You're just like and running like, on fumes and like yeah. wanting to hop, like plop down on the couch and say, nobody talk totally. to me. 
Yeah, totally. And that's just not, that's just not the way that I wanted to live my life mm-hmm. at all. Yeah. I mean, the other thing that also came into play too, is like, it didn't matter how good I was at my job, that I was never going to be able to make the money that I wanted to because the schools dictate how much money you can make. And so there was always going to be a cap and it didn't matter if I was the most amazing person or deserved, you know, a raise if the money wasn't there, the money wasn't there. And so there was a lot less financial freedom as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the thing that a lot of people say about a nine to five. They're like, they like the security of it, but I'm like, you're, you're stuck. Like you're you can't go anywhere. Like if you have these big dreams, well, that's the problem. Most people don't have really big dreams, right? Most people are just kind of like going through the day to day, go to their job, sit in the hour and a half commute, come home, plop down on the couch, repeat every single day. So first of all, I think it's amazing that you knew that you wanted more for your life. And then you actually took action on that, which is the hardest part for most people to do. 100%. Like, and I mean, we also wanted to have another kid and we wanted to buy a bigger house. And it was like, I feel really stuck in the current life situation that we have going on. And I just, I don't like feeling like I'm not in control of what's Mm -hmm. happening. I feel like things were happening to me instead of happening for me or with me. And like, I just didn't want to live that way. And quite honestly, I watched a webinar, which is how I got started in all of this online stuff, which I know is like so many people's story and that's awesome. And I'm so glad that they exist because quite honestly, before that, I like, didn't even know that it was a thing. Being an entrepreneur was like, so not on my radar. That was like, not a thing that I was ever going to do. And then it was this thing that was in front of me of like, you could actually stay home with your kids and still bring in good money. Like we're not talking about little bits of money that maybe could help support our family. We're talking about like the good chunk of income that we need to be able to like pay for how we live. And it almost felt, felt like that, like too good to be true mentality of like, is this really possible? And it is, but you got to work your butt off in order to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I was laughing when you said that that's so many people's stories because that was my story too. I was targeted by a Facebook ad, watched a webinar, was introduced to this magical world of online business. Like what is this place? Like, I felt like I walked into Disney world is the best way. To so true. It. Like we're so so true. Um, well, and the, yeah. I mean, like you said, like people aren't really willing to take action. Like they want the thing they want it really badly, but they're not really willing to put in the amount of work and effort to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I'm assuming you would come home. You would probably do work in your business. You would sit in your car on your lunch break, work during your lunch break, take coaching calls when you could, like if you were working with a coach, I'm saying the things that I was doing as well Mm -hmm. (laughs) at this time. So yeah, I completely Mm -hmm. understand that. But it's about going that extra mile, right? Doing the things that the quote unquote normal person won't do because you have bigger dreams than just following status quo. Status quo. Um, so I would love to know. So how long did you stay in that VA business before you transitioned to coaching? Great question. So I I took this program in May of 2018. It was like a, a three-month program. So I finished it over the summer, which was really great. Um I could do all of that learning stuff before having to dive back into, to working at the school. Um, but it took me a while to land my first client. It took me until the end of 2018. And then I continued to struggle for the beginning part of 2019. Um, and then I started seeing some traction, but I lost two thirds of my clients in December of 2019. And so like, I had been working my butt off to build this, this freelancing business. And I was missing a lot of different pieces, which I was able to finally put together over the course of the next six months and finally build this sustainable business. And so then in the summer of 2020, I 
was sitting with one of my coaches and she was like, you know what, Elise, there's a lot of business owners and coaches out there who are going to help people start their businesses. There's not a lot of coaches out there to help people continue to grow their businesses. It feels like there's like the coaches who are like, let me start you and help you like start your business. And then it's like, cool, let's make make 10 K months. It's like, you are missing a huge chunk in the middle there of what it really means to build this business. And so it was in the summer of 2020 that I finally added the coaching piece into it. And so I did the freelancing thing and the coaching thing simultaneously for a good year and a half. And it wasn't until January of this year that I really fully stepped into the coaching piece of it. But I mean, I was doing coaching as a, I was an instructional coach for teachers in my, in my nine to five job. And coaching is like a big part of, of what like brings me joy. I love coaching and helping people in that capacity. And so even when I started my freelancing business, I knew that eventually I'd probably step back into the coaching role. Okay. So I feel like I'm talking to myself right now. (laughs) Our stories are like literally identical with I love that. everything that you said. Like I started my VA business knowing that it wasn't going to be for me, knowing that I wanted to eventually step into coaching. But for me specifically, I don't know this, if this was your story too. I was terrified. I did not think that I could actually <coughs> help people in their businesses. Like, so it took me three years to move into coaching because I was like, who am I to do this? Like, sure. I have a successful VA business, but like, can I actually show somebody how to do this too? You know, mm-hmm. did you feel that same way? Totally. Well, and the other part too was like, I struggled really hard for like to do all of this stuff. Like, can I really help people if I struggled that hard? And the reality of it is like, you are absolutely the person who needs to help people because the people who like never struggled. And it was like, I started my VA business and two weeks later I was fully booked down. Like, cool. That's not my story. Um, and so like (laughs) getting to help people who are like, why is it so easy for other people? And why am I struggling so hard? Like, let's look at what you're doing because I have also been there and I know what sort of tweaks that you can make to your business that are going to have a really big impact because I did all of the wrong things. And so let me help you avoid all of the wrong things. Let me help you not do those things that I already did for you. Yep. Totally understand that. 100%. Absolutely. So um, we've talked about your background quite a bit. So now I want to talk about the kid portion of it. So All right. So I'm sorry. When did you leave your job and just focus on your business? Was that 2019? 2020. 2020. So, oh, yeah, 2020. That's right. In May of 2020. Two kids at that point. I had two kids and I was pregnant with my third kid. And um, I was talking with our, our, like, our kids went to, a daycare provider. Like she only took care of my kids. It was like in-home daycare. Um, and she was kind of freaking out. Cause I was like, I'm just going to have my kids home with me and do my business. Cause we were still like living in this fantasy land that you can do both simultaneously. You really can't. It's not, not that easy. So we were talking and it was actually going to be beneficial for both of us to have my kids go to daycare still two days a week. And that was one of the best decisions that I have made for my business is to have my kids still go to daycare part-time because then what it has allowed me to do is I am able to be present with them when they are home. And a lot of what I see with moms is like, they want to have this business that they run And they want to have, be like the person that is taking care of their kids 24 seven. And that's beautiful. And it's really hard to run a business that way. Mm -hmm. It becomes very, like very, very difficult to feel like you're dedicating enough time to either job. And you don't want to feel like. Yeah, I can say that from experience because my son just turned three and I was the one raising him like because my husband was working full-time 
mm-hmm. while I was building this business simultaneously. And I literally built my business during nap times and on weekends when my husband was home, that, that was how my business was built because we didn't give him TV either. So we're one of those weird families too, who doesn't give our child a ton of screen time. Um, but it's incredibly difficult. It's, it's, it's very so, hard. Yeah. And, and so like the hardest part is, is that like that pull that you feel of like, I either feel like I'm not doing my business well enough, or I feel like I'm not doing my parenting well enough. And the worst case scenario is like, I don't feel like I'm doing either of them well enough because I'm trying to fit my business into the small mommy cracks of time. And you can't depend, like, I mean, my kids don't give two Fs if I have the meeting scheduled. Like, they're like, cool, mom. That's the time that I'm going to be the biggest jerk instead of like fully focused on whatever activity you've given me, even though I do this activity by myself all the time. And so having those two dedicated days where I could have phone calls, where I could do podcast interviews when I needed the quiet time was was really paramount in allowing me to continue to feel present in both situations. Mm -hmm. And not that you can't build your business during nap time. You totally can. It just becomes harder. Like you're trading one thing for the other. Is it less expensive because you're not sending your kids to daycare? Absolutely. Does that mean that you get to put your kid down for a nap every single day? Yeah. And that those are like, amazing things to have. And if your kid has a rough day and you had two hours worth of work planned and they decided to only sleep for 30 minutes, when are you making up that other hour and a half of time? And so we do a little bit of both. Like I, I do work more than just those two, uh, two days. Like I also work during nap time on the other days, but it was very difficult when my youngest was a newborn because like their nap schedule is completely thrown off. And so I had to be okay during that season of my life working in the evenings again, which I hadn't done since I went full-time in my business. I, I had to work in the evening. So, because that was my most dedicated time. And if he did end up waking up, I had my husband as a backup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, I fully agree with everything that you're saying. Yeah. I mean, being a parent and having a business, it's the greatest gift that you could have, especially being able to work from home. Because for example, if we were still commuting, that's the time that we would miss with our kids, right? But again, like you were saying, if you are focusing on building your business during nap time, obviously it's possible. I did it. I was able to grow a multiple six-figure business that way. Yep. But- one, it went much more slowly than I would have hoped. It took three, well, it didn't take three years for it to happen, but <clears throat> it took almost three years for that to happen. And then now I am so grateful that my husband's able to be home full time. So he actually left his job and the amount of work that I get done now and the amount of focused work I should say is like mind blowing because I never had that before. Like totally. I, I was always the one like carrying the baby monitor. My baby monitor was like literally on my desk while I was on a client call. So like if my son's screaming, like I have a story one time when he was a newborn, like very, very new, he was in one of those swaddles and he rolled Mm -hmm. over and like, obviously he could die. So I told, I was on a discovery call with a potential client. I was like, oh my gosh, my son just rolled over. I have to, I have to run upstairs. I'll be right back. Cause obviously that's the only, that's the most important thing. And they got so mad at me. They were, and like, they wrote me a scathing email after the fact, like how it was so unprofessional. And I was like, you know what? Like, clearly we are not a fit to work together, <laughs> right? Like clearly if you're going to get mad at me because Thank I you saved for my child me. from dying yeah. and suffocating, yeah. then clearly this is not going to work. Right. Um, but I mean, that's a whole other topic that we can go into. It's like the type of clients that you work with when you're a mom. I mean, I don't know about you, but, or, well, you work with freelancing moms. So I work with a lot of moms too, because we just like, we get each other, right? We understand each other. Um, and we all have kids running around in the background during our Zoom calls. Totally. So, yeah. It's, I mean, it's always been important for me to, to really hone in and work with moms in particular, because it is true. Like 
for some reason, the idea of being both a mom and a business owner for business owners who are not moms almost feels this like detriment when it's like, no, 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 you don't understand. I am a superhuman because I am both a mom and a business owner. And like, I can have a meeting and my daughter can come and sit with me and we're still going to have a meeting and I'm fully focused on you and I'm fully focused on her. Like, watch me. Exactly. (laughs) And so, I mean, but one of the things that I do talk with my clients about, because I, I specifically have chosen to work with freelancing moms to help them build this business because I know what it's like to be a mom and have to build this business. And I've also watched all kinds of other freelancing moms quit their businesses because they don't feel like they can do both. That it's this idea of like, the more that you can be intentional with the time that you spend in both of those sectors of your life, being the business owner and being the mom, the more successful you will be overall as a human being. Like you will feel more fulfilled because you're not trying to be both at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's where the daycare comes in, or that's Mm -hmm. where like having a partner comes in. So even if you're like, even if you don't want to go to daycare, can't afford it, whatnot, that's when those nights and weekends come in, right? The nap time, but it's all about actually committing to it. That's the biggest thing that people don't do. So they like, kind of like dip their toe in, Mm -hmm. maybe get a client, then they don't get any more (laughs) clients and then they give up because it's just too hard to manage it all. But Totally. You are listening to two moms right now. I have one and I'm pregnant currently, but you have three. So we are telling you that it is more than possible as long as you actually commit to it. Right. Totally. Totally. So I want to know, do you have any, um, not tips, but like, what do you do when you're feeling overwhelmed? Because I know this is something that comes up for a lot of moms, just like feeling overwhelmed, not just by being a mom, but being a mom and a business owner. Totally. So, um, actually a little over a year ago, my son was two months old. My youngest was two months old. The other two were, um, four and two. And so you can, you can imagine the like chaos that, that was my life in general. And I decided to schedule a podcast interview on a Thursday when I had all three of my children home with me. And after about four or five interruptions in the span of 30 minutes, the podcast host looked at me and she was like, do you just want to reschedule? And I felt like everything inside just like exploded. I was like, cool. Can't do the mom thing. Can't do the business owner thing. What the heck am I even doing? And the overwhelm became like drowning. I was drowning in this overwhelm of like, how am I supposed to make all of this stuff work? And so I realized that one of the biggest things that I needed to do was create really strict boundaries for myself um, and make sure that I wasn't trying to do both at the same time. And I will be completely honest with you. I learned this lesson at least like once a month, if not on a more frequent basis that like trying to mix the two at the same time is not a great idea. Um, but the other thing that I do, even if I'm overwhelmed with things that are not business related, they're like mom related or life related or whatever is to stop what I'm doing and to go take a break and do something that is completely unrelated to, to what I was doing. And so if it was work stuff, then I'm going to go play with my kids. If it's people stuff, because I'm an introvert and I need some alone time, I take the dog for a walk. I completely disconnect from the thing that I was doing and the thing that was causing me overwhelm. Um, and once I feel my body is calm and in a more centered space, the very first thing that I do after that is I do a huge brain dump of all of the things that are in my brain. Cause a lot of overwhelm comes from feeling like you have a lot of stuff on your plate and not really knowing what all of those things are. It almost seems like it's never ending in your brain. Cause you're just like, it's this. And then I'm just imagining it's it's all these things. 
like a long like black cave that just like never ends and you can never see the light at the end of the tunnel totally and it causes you a lot of anxiety Mm because you're like I have this thing and 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 because you're keeping it all in your head you can't actually see the stuff that you have to get done And so once you brain dump it all out, then you can prioritize what stuff has to be done right now, what stuff is not most important, what stuff that other people can help you do. Like, can your husband help you or spouse help you with cooking dinner or cleaning the house or doing laundry or putting the other kids to bed, which my husband does all of those things. He's amazing. And having, but I also had to help. I had to like advocate for myself. He's not just going to know the stuff that I need him to do. Mm -hmm. It's funny Um, that you mentioned that because I don't know if my husband will get mad at me for saying this, but I don't care. We've gotten into a lot of fights for him not being a mind reader. (laughs) And he's like, you, you don't tell me what you're struggling with. How can I know? And I'm like, how do you know that you need to do the laundry, to fold the clothes, to put the socks where I put the socks? How do you not know how to do all of these things. So I'm really glad that you mentioned. So if anybody else is feeling that way, again, you're not alone. Totally. (laughs) Talk to your partner, like open, open lines of communication. Totally. But yeah, I mean, and then once you can prioritize things and I mean, I love me a good list, like make it easy for yourself, schedule it into your time blocks. If you're into time blocking, figure out how much time you actually need to accomplish the things on your list. Cause a lot of them I bet that are like weighing on your brain are things you could accomplish in five minutes. And then it's not there anymore. And it's not taking up space in both your brain and just like causing more anxiety of the things that you still haven't done yet. Um, and that, I mean, it eases the overwhelm so quickly. Yeah, that's such great advice. So thank you for sharing that. So basically stop what you're doing, take a breath, Mm -hmm. (laughs) brain Mm -hmm. dump. And if you're alone with your kids, lock yourself in the bathroom if you have to. And if the fingers are coming under the door, tell them to wait. Tell them to wait because mommy needs a break for a second. Yep. And even if you have super, super little kids, like you have newborns, you have babies who like do require more energy and attention from you, you can still go put them down in a crib or in a safe space and go take five big deep breaths. And you would be amazed how much that calms your nervous system and your body. Mm -hmm. Um, You are important too. Mm -hmm. And, and The other big thing that I see from, from my clients in particular is like, because we are running businesses and we are running houses and taking care of people and including our spouses and animals and any other living beings that even though we understand and know that taking care of ourselves is important, if you're not scheduling it into your life, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's incredibly important. I started making a a date with myself at the beginning of every month to like plan out things that I want to do for myself. So, well, I'm currently pregnant right now. So I used to get my hair and nails done. I'm not doing that currently because of all the chemicals. Um, But I also started doing something. I call it my uh, Steph's day of a long time or something like that, where once a month, my husband will leave the house with our son and like, he'll go to his parents' house for the day. So then I just get that day to do whatever I want. So if I want to go shopping, if I want to go out to eat, if I just want to sit on the couch and watch Netflix for 10 hours, I can do it, but it's my choice. And that has been truly life-changing for me. So if you have the opportunity to do that, oh, do it because it will change your life. (laughs) I promise. Totally. I totally agree. I, um, my youngest goes down at like between six and six 30 PM. And our two older kids don't go down until between seven and seven 30. And so I've gotten in the habit that once I put my youngest down, I will go into our bedroom and I just spend the hour that my two older kids are still awake by myself. And my husband knows he's like, that's, that's Elise's alone time. She's going to do whatever she wants to do during that hour. And I have found that like giving myself that alone time every single day 
keeps me from feeling super overwhelmed throughout the rest of the week. So like, even if you don't have a whole day that somebody can take your kids or, um, that you can just dedicate to yourself, if you can find an hour or even a half an hour, that is going to feed your soul so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Now I'm, I do something similar, but I'll do it during my son's nap time. So like during his nap time is when Mm -hmm. I'll eat lunch. I'll just like, I honestly, I usually just watch TV (laughs) during that time Mm -hmm. where I'll sit outside if it's nice on our patio, but yeah, having that like dedicated time to yourself every day is so important too. So I'm so glad that you mentioned that. So this has been such a good conversation. You've given everybody so many amazing tips for the overwhelmed mom, which is AKA everybody, every yeah, mom right. out there. So thank you again for being here. Thank you for sharing your story and your struggles, especially in those beginning stages, because look, it is possible to be it successful, right? Yep. It is possible. Yep. So what is the best place for everybody to connect with you? So the best place to connect with me would be inside of my Facebook group. It is called the consistent 5k freelancer, um, collective. And I will make sure that stuff has the link for that. So you can come join us over there. You can also find me over on Instagram. Um, it is my first name, underscore last name, underscore, which also will be in the links because my name is not spelled in a friendly manner. So, um, but those are the best two places to connect with me. And that, I mean, I love talking to new people and getting to know your story and just like hearing from you about what's kind of standing in your way and why you have not done the thing that you really want to do. So we can kind of like work through it and talk to each other and build community. Perfect. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And yes, we will link to all of that in the show notes. So it's easy to find because yes, her name is not easy to spell. (laughs) So we'll make it easy for you to find everything. So thank you again for being here. Thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome.